So I'm going to talk about the eclipse, right? Um, I'm in the 60, 78, 10. We're having a problem with the pump. So there's little wires that come to it, and it it wasn't pumping. Um, Tim seems to think that there's a wire out or ruined, and he doesn't know where it is. That's causing the problem, so really what I need to do is figure that out. So I get a, I'll wait for a couple of people to come in, and uh, you know, 43 seconds just isn't enough apparently. I don't rate enough anymore, so you know, people just don't show up. But anyway, with that being said, um, everybody know who Tony Reed is? Tony Reed. He's kind of a comedic farmer on on YouTube, right? He just says what he says, and life is good. Um, the uh, funny part about him is that he's been railing about this. He's been railing about this eclipse for weeks. It'll get dark. It gets dark every night. He, you know, I get it. People made a big deal over about a half an hour or so of the sun dimming or the totality of it, you know, the totality of this thing. So it's like, all right, I don't see the purpose in going across the country to see the totality of it. But there's a lot of people that did feel that it was necessary to uh, go ahead and drive across the country to see this uh I think that's a 916. Should be having um to see the eclipse, which is fine. Uh, not my cup of tea. As a matter of fact, I was in Illinois yesterday. I went and picked up my pea seed out just about to St. Louis. I did videotape some stuff, but anyway, the uh, I didn't want to be anywhere near the people that were coming out to see the eclipse. Because I just didn't want to be bothered with the traffic. And I did kind of leave a little bit late. The fellow that I bought the seed from were friends. So, you know, the internet's an amazing place. And you do you do make friends. Oh, you do make friends on here. And, you know, you connect with people. And that's really what it's all about. And I just so happened to make friends with a guy by the name of Glenn LeDuc. He is a seed dealer. Midwest Merchant and Seed is his company. I think he's got a website there. But, uh, yeah. What does that say? Uh, Hi, New England. Yes, I do follow Trader Green Growing Corn 2020. Yeah, that's right. So he's been railing about these people coming out, you know, to his neck of the woods to watch the eclipse. And he thought it was stupid that people would go that far. I don't think it was stupid. I think it was something that I wouldn't be interested in doing. I know that we had a pretty good view of the eclipse from here, and it was fun. It was a lot of fun. So I made a video of making these things, you know. This is welding glass that this one Tim made. He was a little cheaper about it than what I did, but he made a head thing for his. It would have been easier to just put on the helmet, but that welding helmet, like some people said, you have to actually wave your hand in front of it because, and, and that actually worked. But anyway, so these people that are railing on it, um, Northeast Ohio farmer was another one. He wasn't happy about people, you know, talking about the eclipse as well. Uh, you know, he's like, it's a stupid eclipse. They're closing schools. And I'm like, yeah, they really don't need to close schools and stuff like that. Uh, but it is like a once in a 40 some odd year thing that needs to. Uh... Yeah, the, the small towns that weren't built to, to do that. So anyways, whatever. I drove out. I got back this morning 
uh, picked up William from school and we built those little sunglasses things. We built three of them and, uh, you know, it's pretty cool. But anyway, I have a different takeaway and I'm going to sit down to do this because I can't work and, and do all, well, maybe I can. Um, <clears throat> I've got a bit of a, a different takeaway from these, this eclipse than a lot of people. And it's so easy anymore for people to be negative. It seems like the world runs on negativity, on negativity. Uh, Something I would have done to to run all the way across. The, I I could have just stayed uh, this morning. I could have stayed in say Columbus, Ohio, and waited for the eclipse to come through. But I I, I wanted to spend it with my wife and my my little guy and the family, looking at the sun through welding glasses that we had taken out of old welding helmets and made our own things. And that's what it meant to me. It was a family thing. When I was a kid, and I can tell you, I remember it like it was forty some odd years ago. Uh, when I was a kid, this building was new, and it was 1978, and this very same eclipse was happening, and I remember where this tractor is sitting right here, my Uncle Irv, who is now dead, and my father, who is now old. He's 76, come tomorrow. Tomorrow's my dad's birthday. He'll be 76 years old tomorrow. They stood right there looking right there at the sun through probably one of the welding helmets that I just cannibalized today to make those to make those things for to view through the uh, at the at the sun today I remember that I was six okay so that's not a negative thing it's a positive thing I remember it at six years old because it was cool I remember seeing the sun vaguely it's not something that's you know was such a big deal but I will say this, it was a memory that I have of my uncle who is no longer living. He's gone. He died in 2011. Um, and I thought about it on my way home from the, uh, on my way home from the, uh, from Illinois, picking up my seed, that I'm going to be 52 years old in July. I've got less years in front of me than I do behind me. And will I be here the next time that particular eclipse happens? The answer to that is probably no. I know my mom and dad will be long gone. I know that a lot of people that I love will be long gone and possibly even some of my children, if I'm alive, the next time this thing comes through. So it's a memory of me to my son, William, to Timothy, He's 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. He'd be in his mid-70s. He'll be about the age my father is now, the next time that particular eclipse comes. And he will remember, hopefully he would remember it, his father and his stepmother, Teresa, building these little glasses. I put them in the cabinet up there, and they may still be there if this building is still here uh, at that time. I doubt that it will be because the posts are, are rotting off. A lot of people turned this eclipse into a negative thing, like, oh, my God, 50 million people are going to travel across the country. It's going to be like a Taylor Swift getting turned out, a Taylor Swift concert getting let out for the whole length of the country all the way up to Maine. I thought, really, is that, the, is that what you think about this? Now, there's bad actors out there, people that suck, and... Those people are the type of people that will, you know, cut you off get just to get two seconds in front of you with a vehicle. They'll they'll just be just belligerent drunks waiting for the eclipse to happen. And after it happens, they're the first one to go out and kill somebody in their car. You know, there's bad actors everywhere, and that does happen. That's the negative side of this this mass migration to watch total eclipse or totality in the eclipse. I got to see 90%. That's good enough for me. 90% is good enough for me. I got to see the little sliver, um, took a couple of pictures. It was a nice day. Uh, I made memories with my son, William, my wife, Timothy, Grant. Dad was here. He's like, oh, I've seen enough of these things. You know, he's, he's at that age now. It just doesn't matter to him. We made it a positive. 
And all of those people that loaded up in campers and drove from Colorado, Missouri, Minnesota, Mississippi, and all of those states that, you know, people that took the time to take their kids, their wives, their grandparents, their parents, whatever, out to see totality. They took the time to spend with their family. That was wonderful. That was great. I didn't want to be driving in it, but as I was, I was like, you know, this is America. That is America. That is what people do. They, they, they do come together and they do go to see these things. Yes, there's shitty people. Yes, there's good people. Yes, people got hurt. Yes, there's a traffic jam from Erie, Pennsylvania, clear out down to Texas right now. Of all those people that showed up this morning wanting to get home because they got to go to work tomorrow. They took the day off to spend with their family. Wasn't that pretty awesome? Um, but like I said earlier, Tony Reed was like, I'm going to, I could profit off of this thing. Yeah, you could, you could. And a lot of people, a lot of people did profit off of it. Gas was about 50 cents more than it should have been. Um, the Burger King was actually giving food away. Uh, what did they call that thing? The, 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 I don't know, galactic deal or some damn thing. Anyway, uh, the, there was uh, hotel rooms were twice, three times, four times as expensive, you know, last night as they were that they're, then they're going to be tomorrow night because people wanted to, and that's capitalism and that's okay. But I just, I just think that out of all the negativity, this was a positive. It should be a positive. Yeah. Some people went overboard. Of course, some people were like, Hey, you know what? That's cool. I got to see the eclipse. I got to see my wife who's never seen an eclipse in her life. You know, she was raised in the Philippines, went to Japan. Not that I don't think that, I don't think that she hadn't lived through an eclipse. I personally think that she just never paid attention to it. And because they made such a big deal of it, she paid attention to it. And I made the glasses and she was the first one here to see when it started. She's like, I think I see something at the corner of the moon of the sun. I was like, sun doesn't have corners. Well, you know what I mean. She's like, you know, then I went out and sure enough, the moon was just starting to interface with the uh, sun. And it was cool because she was really excited. I was excited for her. I've seen them before. It's not, you know, it wasn't my first one. I got to see William, who's now five. He's almost six years old. He'd never seen one. And he was like thrilled to death. Daddy, daddy, they gave me these glasses. Well, they gave him the glasses that turned it pink, and I gave him the welding thing that I made for him so he could see it. And anybody that was at the school when we picked him up, I handed it to him. They're like, they're looking at, oh, this is so cool. I said, yeah, you want to see it really good? Look through this. And then they could really see it through the welding glass. It was great. So, yeah, it was. So for everybody that made it negative, fully on you. You guys need to, to take a chill pill. You need to realize that it was not a negative thing. It was a positive thing. It was something that brought families together. And I said this, I think I said it today on Instagram. You know, if there's a husband and a wife that had an argument and they had planned, you know, and they were just mad as hell at one another and they had already planned this trip and they got to see it, I guarantee you they made up. I guarantee if they didn't make up, they need to call it quits. But, uh, you know, it's just, yeah, it was just a family thing. It was fun. My aunt actually cleaned an old welding helmet up so she could see it. And my mom could see it and and everybody. It was great. Um, but yeah. Oh, what an annoying bird. Yeah, Yeah, they're annoying. They really are. I don't hear them anymore. I just keep them around so people on YouTube can complain about them. It's the only reason I have those things here. I, you know, other than that, I would just shoot them and eat them. But, oh, the scare tactics about people, the the end of the world. Yeah, like it's the second coming of Jesus. It's not the second coming of Jesus. It was an eclipse. They happen all the time, just in different parts of the world. I'm going to read some of these comments here. So, yeah. My welding helmet lens is look looked so good in this something that I showed her. 
smallness in the universe, birds, what birds? Right. Watchdogs and farmyard. There you go. Uh, Mr. Purcell, I'm doing just fine. You moved someplace. Where did you move to? I forget. Did you move to Ohio or some damn thing? I think you moved out west or something. Yeah, I can't remember. I, I know you moved, but maybe out to Pennsylvania. I don't know. I got this schmegma in my damn throat. Anyway, um, yeah, so it's over now. People are driving home. They're still talking about it. Kids in the back seat. Yeah, Monroe County. Yeah, Monroe County, Pennsylvania. I knew you went out. And, uh, you know, they just the kids are still talking about it. And they're going to talk about it in school tomorrow. And the kids that went with their parents to see Totality, they're going to be talking to their friends. And, and they're going to have a different experience from it. Because what they saw was basically when we were kids, we did that. And then we got to punch somebody. Um, they get to see just the, 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 the ring, just a ring with the moon, this dark ring with a light around it. Um, so each one, everybody's going to have a different story to tell, even though they all look, everybody looked at it and was like, Hey, yeah, that's really cool. But did you see the pink and the green and all this and that? And the other thing, you know, a lot of people will have different experience of it and it's good for the kids, you know, because they're going to remember this for the rest of their lives or at least the next time. Oh, I remember when I was a kid, my mom and dad drug us from New York to Ohio or from, from, you know, North Carolina to Erie, Pennsylvania to, to watch an eclipse. And, uh, you know, on the way home, dad had a heart attack and he died. It was the last thing we did together. And it was fun, you know, that sort of shit. You know, we don't own, we don't own our own lives. I mean, we can die tomorrow. We can die tonight. We may not even wake up in the morning. And, uh, your attitude has improved greatly as of late. You think so? You know, if you only knew what I'm going through right now, and I will share this at some point, but if you only knew what I'm going through right now, you would be totally amazed as to how calm I am. And that statement actually is almost bringing tears to my eyes because I'm not... I'm not a sensitive person, but what's, what I'm going through right now is probably one of the worst things that anybody could go through in their life. And yes, I'm looking at it as a positive. The end is going to be negative as hell, but you got to look at the positive of things. Something happened to me a month ago, and it has changed my life for the rest of my life. And it is just one of those things that I'm not, I can't put it out on YouTube, but if I, when I can, I will. Um, but it's actually given me new direction and what I'm going to do. Uh, I've pretty much made up my mind. I'm going to do this. It has nothing to do with farming. It has everything to do with what happened to me on, on, in Mar on, in March, in the beginning of March. It's because I remember that was just all comedy. Um, you know, I'm 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 going to be 52 in July. It's coming. My wife will be 41 in, on the 10th day after tomorrow. She'll be 41 years old. Um, it's it is just one of those things. You you just things you have no control over. You can let them eat you up, and you can. Or you can just make lemons out of lemonade. Or, yeah, make lemonade out of lemons. I'm, I'm taking lemons that I was dealt. I was dealt a pretty shitty hand. Timmy Cornpicker knows um, because I told him. I, he's not going to tell anybody because I told him not to. Um, but you're so vain. Um, vain? No, this has nothing to do with being vain. It just has to do with evil. Um, it has to do with evil. And people do evil things. And they did evil things to me. Uh, not one person, not two people, not three people, a bunch of people have done evil things to me, uh, caught me, it blindsided me. The one event did, there's multiple events, um, multiple events and, and it's fine. Uh, I've got, I got my wife. She's, she's my best support group. She's, she's great. 
I got my son. I can go home at night and I can give him a hug and, and, and he knows that everything's going to be okay. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be okay at the end of this, but uh, we're going to see. We're going to see. I, I've got an appointment on the 30th and we'll find out for sure um, where I'm going and what's going to happen. But it doesn't stop what I'm going to do. Uh, what I'm going to do is going to be so far from the farm that y'all are going to be like, whoa. And it's, it's definitely directly related to this. Um, and it's good. It's good. So through all the negative and the, the nasty things that have happened to me in the last 65, 35 days, um, I, I'm telling you that the eclipse was a positive thing. We're all still here. Jesus didn't show up. He was never going to show up. Jesus was born in a manger. He died when he was 32 years old. They hung him from a cross. He didn't come in on a ball of fire. He was born in a manger. That's it, you know, and the second coming is not going to be an eclipse. Aliens aren't going to come and shoot fire from their assholes and burn your ears out with freaking laser beams. There, it's, it's just an eclipse. They've happened forever. It's just something that happens. Every once in a while. And it's crazy. It's awesome. It's, it's, it's neat. And that's it. It made fear porn. What the hell's fear porn? John Scott, you have and have had in the past my prayers. You know, I've had, so I can touch on a couple of things. That I had a major theft that happened to me, which I'm looking at something like over $20,000 was stolen. Uh, I don't know when, I don't know who, but I'm going to find out. Uh, that happened. That That really happened. And, you know... I'm going to find out who it is, you know, and am I going to put them in jail? Probably not, but I'm going to ask them why, and I'm going to ask them to give it back. I don't care if it takes 20 years to give it back. I want it back. Um, the uh, Go Go Bobo sister. I saw you on Andy Omar's post on Andy Omar's live the other day when he was talking about um, Mark Thornton. You know, I watched Mark Thornton, and I thought, that dude, there's something off about that guy. I haven't really put two and two together, but Andy Omar comes along and he says, um, he's got autism. And I thought, you know, not nothing against autistic people, but I I think it's I think it's worse than autism. I think it's actually some form of schizophrenia. Um, he came on and made that when he got into the fight back in February and made that post of how it all went down, and then lo and behold, Andy Omar shows up with the videos, and what Mark had said was not at all what had happened, other than the. Uh, it's over twenty thousand dollars. Yes. Yeah, payback is going to suck for these people that do you wrong. You know what? Um, is it? Am I the type of person that's going to go and destroy somebody's life because they wronged me? Do, do people really think that that's who I am? Um, Beyond the ranch, he's posted one video. I think that I think. I like, uh, you know, I like Mike, um, but I think that that's not going to go. I really don't. People aren't interested. People that watch his channel are not interested in it. Karma will take care of them. Danny, you know, there, there's, there's going to be a day of reckoning. And my aunt does not believe that there's a day of reckoning. I said something to her about it because she knows what's going on. She says, Wesley, people, evil people get away with shit all the time. 
She says they can live their entire lives doing wrong to people and nothing ever happens to them. And I don't believe that. I believe something bad is going to happen to them. I really do. Just, I just got on. How was the earthquake? The earthquake was nothing. I mean, I didn't even feel it. I was in the pickup truck. The boys were in here. They said shit started shaking. Teresa called up and says, what, did you feel that baby earthquake? And she's from the world of earthquakes. Ed Rosenborough, Burrow, Berg, Ed Rosenberg, thank you. It'd be pretty tempting to destroy someone like that. But we know you're better than that. Yes. Um, probably 30 years ago, I put a, sent a long distance dedication, a high speed lead poison at some of these people. Um, honest to God, I, I really think that it was. Well, where exactly are you, Go Go Bobo? And did you reply about Andy Omar? I don't think you did. No. I know there are people who you know who have stepped on me, and when I encounter them, I, they act afraid of me. I guess they think that I <laughs> think that I, think that I think like they do. That is true. No. So you weren't on Andy Omar's live because I saw Go Go Bobo. I actually replied to it. So maybe it was somebody else. I don't know. Oh, oh, oh. Tell me. Look. Yeah, I know. But I mean, a county. Are you in Hunterdon County? Warren County? Where the hell are you? Give me a county. So go, 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 Bobo, and you are different. Well, people around here, and Timmy Cornpicker knows people around here, they would, they would. I didn't see any zombies, no. Penergetic. Uh, you know what? Works great. I don't need to talk about it. I don't. You see, the problem with Penergetic is people are cheap motherfuckers. And what they'll do is they will, if they buy Penergetic, Essex County. Oh, no shit. That's where my uncle was killed at the Essex County Airport. Um, yeah, Essex County Airport. They put a put the a Mooney airplane up into them and they, they mid air collision back twenty two years ago. Um but yeah, what the hell was I saying? Uh yeah, people around here, they're just they will they'll, they'll be your friend. They think you you'll think they're your friend, you'll you'll give them you'll talk to them and stuff like that, like they're your friend. And the reality is they just want to stab you in the back. Age softens you, you know, I don't know about the, you know, I don't know that it softens me. Um, you just have a different perspective on life when you get older. You know, when you're 20 something, you're invincible. When you're 30 something, things are good. When you're 40 something, you think, wow, another 10, another 15, 20 years and I'll be retiring, you know, and then you get to 50 and it's like, I don't have enough to retire. What am I going to do? Is it because of the Lyme disease? I don't have Lyme disease anymore, my friend. Nope. Learn that lesson the hard way. People st stab you on the back for anything. Yeah, they do, yeah. I'll retire when I die, I think. Well, you know, I, I kind of feel that way too, but there's going to come a point my life when I'm going to want to say, you know what, William or Tim or Grant or whoever's here, if anybody's here, um, I'm going to take a vacation for like three months. I'll see you in three months. If you got any major problems that you can't handle, give me a call and I'll walk you through it.
Um, yeah, Lyme disease can suck. It's inflammation. Uh, what you need to do is um, OCP3, which kills inflammation, and OC, OPC3. OPC3 is, is just a supplement. And once I did that, my joints, my knees, all that inflammation, you, you will always have Lyme disease. Um, just take good care of yourself. And there she is. What are you bringing me, a sandwich in the middle of the day? 6.30. I managed to get the mower go. You got it mowing? Yeah. How did you do that? Did you have a jump an awesome straw? You got a pole <laughs> over here? Because <laughs> I'm an awesome straw. You're so awesome. Look at you. Somebody asked who that pretty girl is that comes into the shop every once in a while. Did you know that? <laughs> Somebody asked. You know, like in a video, the video the other day, they're like, who's that pretty girl that comes oh, into the shop so every shit. once in a while? Are you live in Instapot? No, this is actually YouTube. Oh, hi, YouTube. At least YouTube makes yeah. money. Hi, YouTube. <laughs> BC65925, I was at your place yesterday. Unfortunately, I don't have your phone number, Bill. And I would have called you because it would have been a nice place to view the uh, eclipse from. But I had to get home, obviously. Sounds like my dad coming in. I said to, to that person that was asking that that's my wife. Um, she's awesome. You know, she is so awesome. I don't know what that is. Is that dad? No, that's Tim. All right, so Tim's coming in with a load of hay. Um, yeah, happy birthday, Teresa. She's out of here. She doesn't like YouTube. We are going to do, we are going to do an interview. Me and Teresa. I'm going to interview her, and she's going to talk about her life a little bit. Never felt hot and cold, uncontrollable shaking. Oh yeah, yeah. That that initial infection. Um, you really need to take care of that with the. Uh, so you want to, what you want to do is you want to use doxycycline, uh, two weeks on, one week off, 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 then one week on, one week off, one week on, one week off, do that for a month, and then amoxicillin. Use amoxicillin for a, uh, let's see, do the same thing you want. Two weeks on, one week off for one month. And that should get you. Bedminster Eclipse was a bit let down. No, it was beautiful here. Beautiful. She is awesome. Yes, she is. But anyways, I got to go because Timothy's here. And she made me a sandwich. A sandwich. Isn't that awesome? So, yeah. So, go, go, Bobo. I didn't understand. Was that you... On Andy Omar's video or not? Yes or no? Because you said, no, that's Go Go Bobo. Are you one and the same? Because Go Go Bobo's sister, you're not a female. I know you're a man. No makeup and still beautiful. Old age setting in, I'll be what? 41. 41. I'll be 52. And I've got to wear these stupid glasses now. <laughs> no, I'm not the same. Okay, wow. So why do you, do you know Go Go Bobo? Make Wes a sandwich woman. She does without asking. This girl, I have gained weight. So, how many hamburgers do you want? This cracks my ass up. How many hamburgers <laughs> do you want? I want, you know, you want one or two. It's like, whatever, just give me a hamburger. So, she'll make two hamburgers because just give me a hamburger. A means two. So, she decides, I said to her, I got kind of got mad because I'm eating. I got to eat it. I hate wasting food. Um, so I'm waiting for this response. Go, go, Bobo sister. Go, okay. Go, go, go. That's how I came up with the name seven years ago when I was on some shows with go, go, Bobo. Oh, okay. So you are go, go, Bobo's sister, but, but I know you're a guy. If you want to have coffee, come on down. You know, Teresa, you want to make coffee and sure. we'll have coffee have and tea. or a cup of tea if you'd well, like, I'll and you know, you can come down. Email is on the way. Thank you. Yeah, because I was out there. I'll probably be out there again. 
Uh, I don't know when, but I'll be out there. So, okay, hey, off subject, um, but you want me to ask Cole or DC when you can visit their farm? Those dudes don't want to ever see this man on their place. I guarantee you. Yeah, you can just call. You know, send me an email, onelonelyfarmer at yahoo.com, and I'll contact you, and you can come on out. If you go if you go past that Exxon, that Dunkin' Donuts, down to the next light, make a left. The corner store is on your right. That's where my wife wa worked when I met her. You make that left. Go down to the first road on your right. Go down there. You'll see the farm. So you know where we are. All right. Uh, if you go to the Philippines, you got to go with somebody that knows what they're looking at. So, yeah, just send me an email or something. It's fine. Text message. I'll give you my phone number. It's fine. They can come over. People can come over. You're going to you're going to go to the Philippines in June. God, I I can't. I got things to do. So. Not that you're inviting me, but yeah, no, I, I, I would love to go. It's awesome. Uh, you know, June is hot. It's hot. It's hot. Oh, my God. June. And then I think once you hit July, it starts the rainy season up there in Zambales. So, but yeah, I'd love to go, but not happening. But anyways, I got to go. I'm going to eat my sandwich. Oh, but anyways, let me finish my story about the, the hamburger. So I told her, I said, one hamburger. One hamburger. Okay. So what she did was, instead of making two sandwiches, she made one sandwich with two hamburgers, with two cheese, two pickles between them, kind of like a Big Mac, only four Big Macs. It's about what it was. They are great people, yes. So anyways, I had to yell at her for that. I actually pulled one of the burgers out and threw it in the trash or threw it to the dog. I think I did that. And uh, she was like, what did you do that for? I said, one means one. So I kind of got her there. So the hamburgers that we had made from the cows that we had killed here uh, were thick and big. And some of them were smaller. So now she's gotten done with the thick and big ones and she's down to the small ones. So now I'm back to having two hamburgers and I had to give her hell. I said, just one. I only need one. She's like, yeah, but it's smaller. It's a, it's a, an inch smaller. It's nothing. Anyways, here comes the big man. What are you doing? Uh, William was teasing me. Tim, this is my wife. Right. The five-year-old was teasing you. Yeah. yeah. Was he really? Yeah. Ride your own bike. This is my bike. Well, that's not your bike. Oh, that's my bike. Anyways, are you a supportive wife? So that's very, what she very does. Very supportive. So she brings food. This crazy Asian. She brings food all the time, and she feeds. She. Uh, there's been a few problems with food in, in this one, right? She'd bring food for everybody, whether it was pizza or, right? Whether it was pizza, cheesesteaks, things like that. She would make food all the time. Don't chase that kid. And then, don't you hurt him. You still have both your legs. Yes, yes, you were lucky you jumped because... If you hadn't picked your legs up, I'm pretty sure you would be uh, gimping around here, crazy woman. Oh, with the bailer. Yeah, see, she admits it now. It's like, oh, what? oh, was that me? Um, but anyway, she would bring food for everybody, everybody. And this was when Joseph was working here. Cody was working here. I think Grant was even here at that time. Yeah. Of course, Tim, he wouldn't pass a buffet, you know, if it was 40 miles away, he would go find it. But, um, yeah, so I came in. The one time I came in and there's pizza boxes all thrown in the trash cans in here. I'm like, what'd you guys get pizza and didn't even, well, we didn't know when you would be back. You know, I have a telephone. You can call me and say, hey, Uncle Wes, or hey, Dad, when are you going to, you know, or when are you going to be back? I got some pizza. You want some? And I would have either said, nah, don't worry about it. Or, you know, because Teresa, Teresa is going to make me something or something. The last time I came in. And they, how many pizzas? They had like two pizzas, cheesesteaks, and all this shit. That was a long time ago. It's been a long time ago. And I walked in the shop, and Joe's there eating the last piece of pizza after they had eaten everything. They saved me nothing. 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 So I called that one. I called her up, and I said, we ain't making them motherfuckers food ever again. 
Isn't that what I said? Yeah. I said, I come in here, and I'm starving. I mean, I'm the last one to come in. Whatever I was doing, I think I was mowing. I'm the last one to come in, and they had food. They could have left me two slices of pizza out of how many is in a pie? Eight. Eight. So 16 slices, Five. Pe four people here. Yeah, Grant, Cody, Tim, Joe. They ate 16 slices of pizza and a cheesesteak. And probably some mozzarella sticks and shit like that. So I was like, yep, that's it. No more of that. And I think, I don't think we did after that. That was it. No, that was it. That was the last one. She was mad. She wouldn't even make, she would make hamburgers. But uh, last summer we, we pulled the grill out in here and started cooking in here. Oh, no. no these but that's, it's different because Grant and Tim are here and, you know, yeah, it's good. Once you get that weight on, it's hard to get off. No, it's not. See, I got a pretty wife, you know. And pretty wives, they like to burn calories, don't you? I'm you talking like, dirty and in that. Do you like to burn calories? Yeah. Okay, so uh, it's not hard to come off. Yeah. You know, you just got to make time for that. But, no, it actually comes off pretty quick because uh, we just work. Once summer comes, that's it, we go. So, it's a lot of food. They ate it all, nothing for me. And, you know, you, you know how the food flows, Danny. Food flows. When, he, when when we're down there, cook, when we were down in North Carolina, how much food did we have? We had Lewis cooking. We had Mommy cooking. We had you cooking. Lewis did a good job. I mean, we had people cooking. There was no shortage of any food. Nobody went home hungry, I can tell you that. Yeah. So. No one North Carolina. I don't go off. No, can you knock it off? I think that I'll, I'm going to talk to Jen. We'll find out how fast you are, buddy. Ooh. Timmy Cornpecker. He's like 30 seconds Sam over there. Oh. <laughs> oh. I'm going to call her up and say, hey, Jen, um, Tim was like disrespecting me. <laughs> and I need to know, is he like a, is he like Long John Silver or Long Dong Silver or is he like uh, 30 seconds Sam? <laughs> no, I don't know. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm just playing around. Um, so much food, it was nuts. I don't think there was a time I didn't have a piece of food in my hand. Right? You know, a, a happy crew is a well-fed crew, and I think everybody was well-fed and happy. Nobody went home. I mean, we would get in at 2, 3 in the morning, and there was food. I miss food. that. Damn. I do, too. Can but we do that again? Maybe. That's Two Minute Man. Oh, the Two Minute Man. Okay, well, two minutes is better than 30 seconds, but uh, anyhow... My old man's coming in, so I'm going to cut this off. Thank you, and I hope everybody that's here enjoyed it. Hit the thumbs up button. You know, it doesn't hurt. And, uh, yeah, a happy sailor is a bitching sailor. Oh, wait, that's the Navy. <laughs> Anyways, have a nice day, evening, night, whatever.